Well, with LIGO in this incarnation, the black holes were the things that were of greatest interest to me. But we also will watch neutron stars collide. We'll watch black holes turn neutron stars apart. If we're lucky, we'll see gravitational waves from the core of a supernova explosion. And uh, the team is searching for gravitational waves from what are called cosmic strings, defects in the structure of space and time uh, in the very early universe. So those are the things that we're going, going after. Oh, oh, and spinning neutron stars, pulsars. Uh, that These things we are likely to see some of, most of these by the time we reach design sensitivity. But for me, the holy grail of the early LIGO era has always been black hole collisions. Because when black holes collide, they create what I like to call a storm in the shape of space and time. Time speeds up and slows down quite wildly, but briefly the rate of flow of space, or the, the, the shape of space becomes highly distorted like in a giant uh, water wave. It's that, those distortions of the shape of space and time that produce the gravitational waves. We have never before seen how warped space-time behaves in that kind of a storm. We're now seeing it in the computer simulations that go along with these observations. And for me, that's been the holy grail for the first time to probe how space and time behave in a storm. Well, the most interesting thing in the longer run with gravitational waves is going to be to study the first one second of the life of the universe. Gravitational waves are the only form of radiation that is so penetrating that if created in the first one second, it would travel unscathed by intervening matter uh, to Earth and bring us a picture of what went on. And so I expect that with gravitational waves, we will first, we will probe the inflationary era of the universe, uh, the earliest moments when the universe is thought to have been expanding extremely rapidly. We have a shot at watching the birth of the fundamental forces, uh, not just the birth of matter, but the birth of the fundamental forces. Uh, when the universe was about roughly a billionth of a, of a second old, the uh, uh, electromagnetic force came into being. Before that, the electromagnetic force was unified with the weak nuclear force. That moment, as the universe cooled, they came apart and gained their own identity, and so it was the birth of electricity and magnetism. And that happens, perhaps, we hope, in a bubble through what's called a first-order phase transition, very much like a water droplet forming from water vapor. But uh, by contrast with water droplet that then sort of sits there and quivers, these bubbles expand at the speed of light. Inside a bubble, the electric and magnetic forces exist. Outside, they don't exist. And this bubble of new force expands and collides with another bubble and produces a gravitational wave. And then as the universe expands, the wavelength of that wave increases until today it's in the frequency band, not of LIGO, but of an analog of LIGO called LISA, which will be flown in space, uh, three spacecraft that track each other with laser beams, and which we, I expect, will fly around 2030.